buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It's Monday on the show. I think it's Monday. And no, we got a lot to talk about over the weekend. I'll just uh, I'll just uh, uh, get it out right here at the beginning of the show. My uh, my wife is on a uh, uh, solo camping trip, whale watching. So I am here at home alone with the children, which means as a result of these Dave shows, I go to bed at two and I get up at six for the next three days. So uh, if you're expecting like uh, uh, competency and such on four hours of sleep a night, think again. So anyway, that should be really fun and exciting, huh? Well, we got news. John Laurinaitis appears to have been fired. We got Ric Flair speaking on his last match. We got injuries to WWE female wrestlers. They're wrestlers again at house shows over the weekend. And, of course, we've got Monday Night Raw tonight. We've got a lineup for the show, and we'll tell you about it. And you know what? It ain't going to be uh, ripped up, torn up, shredded before the show goes on the air. Because that bloke's gone. So uh, this lineup I read you, it's actually going to happen. It's a new era. And, of course, we had a lot of shows this weekend. I watched uh, watched a couple of matches from the G1. Not nearly enough, apparently. I've got uh, AW Rampage. AW Battle of the Belts. I have got SmackDown. We have the return of Karrion Cross and Scarlet. And a lot more. So there's... There's no shortage of things to talk about here today, and uh, I guess we got Mike here to try to fill in the blanks, right? He better have slept. So anyway, if you want to text us, 425-780-7566 is the phone number, 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. Thanks, Dom. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Um, Poor DJ Convoy. It's got uh, PTSD, the Vince McMahon era of WWE. And listen, brother, I do too, but you know what? It's over. It's gone. It's done. I still have to, I have to, I have to still answer the phone these days, despite my PTSD of Tim Flowers calling me for years. But it's done. He doesn't call me anymore. Got to get over it at some point. So I realize that there have not been sweeping changes yet, but you know what? Let's see what happens on on this Raw show here tonight. Because I see things that apparently nobody else sees. I don't get it. But that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to watch the shows if you don't want to. But, Raw is tonight, and this is the lineup for the show. Bobby Lashley versus Ciampa for the U.S. title. You know what I'd do if I were Hunter? I'd make Ciampa the champion. And listen... I'm a big fan of Bobby Lashley, and these fans love Bobby Lashley, and Bobby Lashley is super over. But you got to send a message. You got to send a message that you're going to be making some changes right here. And this is nothing, this change has nothing to do with Lashley. This change has to do with Ciampa. The fact that Ciampa got brought up and was, at best, a manager type that did matches here and there. And remember the first time he came up and they just never did anything with him? And I think that, uh, you know what they could do? You know what I'd do if I were Triple H? You know what I'd do, Mike? I'll tell you. This damn show's in Cleveland tonight. If I were Triple H, Johnny Gargano comes back and helps his old friend Ciampa win that title. And then you're telling people that things are different. You're bringing back that... That small guy that never had a chance on the main roster. Johnny Gargano under Vince never had a chance on the main roster. But man, you know who pushed that guy to the moon? Hunter. And if you want to let people know that things have changed, that's a good way to do it. We have the uh, the women's tag team title tournament beginning. You know what I do? On. You know what? Hold, hold on. on. Let me just get through this. Because you know what I do if I were Hunter? You I know what I do? This a bit, but it's a bit. I, I. It's not a bit. I would do this women's tag team tournament. I don't care who wins. Although if it were me, it would be Asuka and Kyrie Sane. But that's beside the point. And uh, and they would... Kyrie Sane? You heard me. You heard me. And... <laughs> oh, you want... Are you not paying attention to Twitter? 
Well, Asuka said, I'd like to win those tag team titles, but where's my partner? And you know who responded? Kyrie Sane. So anyway, I would have uh, whoever wins. It doesn't matter. But then at the Clash of the Castle in front of 70,000 people. And by the way, that is also on AEW All Out Weekend. So you're really sending a message that weekend. That's the return of Sasha and Naomi. And they issue a challenge to the new champions at that gigantic show. That's what I do. And then we have Rey Mysterio and Finn Balor. And you know what I'd do if, if I were Hunter in that situation? I'd have, I'd have Finn Balor win when Dominic turns on Ray, and that's when this crew tells him, you know what, you're an uh, you're, uh, 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 egotistical father. Uh, that guy, you know, he, you know, he's Ray Mysterio Jr. Well, you know what, you're an actual junior of Ray Mysterio, unlike Ray Mysterio, who Ray Mysterio Sr. was his uncle, not his dad. So your dad never, he never gifted you the mask. So we're going to gift you a mask. And they have a badass mask for this guy. You put a mask on Dominic, you turn him heel. He's part of this crew. That's what I'd do if I were Hunter. But you know what? I'm not. So we'll see what they do on Raw tonight. What do you think? How do you live with your omniscience? Uh, seriously. It's, yeah. Hey, listen, it's hard. It's a burden. Let me tell it? you. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't well, even know. Here's a little bit of an issue that I would point out about having Johnny Organo come out and help Ciampa win the title, because it's not that I'm necessarily against that, because it would make for a hell of a moment. We've seen favorites like Dakota Kai come back. We've seen EO Sky come back when it looked like she would be back on her way to Japan. So you never know what you can see in this new Triple H administration, but... Would that not put Johnny Gargano directly in the camp of The Miz? And can you imagine the way Candace and, and well, obviously you're going to have to have some sort of awkward moment with Austin Theory, of course, but can you imagine those three alongside The Miz and Maurice nonstop? Well, here's Why the difference. Why are you doing this? Here's the Why difference. Why are you doing this, Because, Brian? listen, Hunter's not the one that put Ciampa as a heel with uh, The Miz. So the point is, this guy, this guy, it's time for a clean slate. Why is Champa? Why is Champa a heel with the Miz? Whose dumb idea was that? So it's a great way you can split them off. They can be baby faces. They can be wearing a tag bright team. colors at that. Wearing bright colors at that, Tommaso Champa. But uh, look. bro, there's a lot of things I'd change about this company if I actually were in charge, and a lot Here's... of it has to do with whose cast is what. Here's the thing about Tommaso Champa is. I don't need to see him main event WrestleMania. What I need to see is layers of a mid card, including people who actually have some credibility. So when you defeat them on the way up or on the way down, whatever, you know, something actually matters there. And I think that's a great spot for Ciampa. And that's what I was thinking. And I would love to see him win the U.S. title. But I will say this. If Gargano comes back. To me, you can have a situation where Lashley wins by DQ or whatever it is, holds onto the title because, look, with all due respect, Gargano and Ciampa are not spring chickens. They have been banged up nonstop. Johnny Gargano is a very young man who's had a very old back for quite some time. I don't know if I would rather see them in the tag team ranks, and obviously they still have to pull their weight there, but at least... They would be tagging in and out, and maybe that would actually extend them a little bit. I don't know if that's the the, the worst idea, but I kind of like that. If you don't want to take the title off of Lashley and you're going to bring Gargano back, make them a group away from The Miz and just have them be them. You know, you could have uh, you could have Johnny uh, or you have uh, uh, Ciampa lose, so he doesn't end up with the title, and then Miz and Theory stomp a mud hole in uh, uh, Ciampa. Yeah. Turning him babyface, and then Gargano comes out to make the save. And it's not my number one match for a first feud with those guys, but you could do Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus The Miz and Theory. Gets Theory out of the title picture, gives these two guys a match. I mean, listen, I'm not the biggest fan of The Miz, and Austin Theory has not blown me away in the ring of late, but he ain't having a bad match with Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. It ain't happening. Nope. Especially so, not Ciampa, no way. Gargano, both of them. Dude. Well, I mean, you could at least say there's some rust on Gargano again. I mean, well, look, I, I'm not expecting him to walk back in there and be perfect or anything like that, but Ciampa's been humming right now. So, yeah, obviously with him, it's not going to be any question. And, again, I see him 
regardless of what happens with Gargano, you know, I still see Ciampa as if, if anybody's going to have a longer term stay there, I'd bet a dollar on him. And then everyone, uh, everyone's mad at me for the idea that I suggested, you know, can someone hire this Takeshita here in this company, AEW? I mentioned WWE, and here comes the PTSD again. Listen, I, I realize, I realize, I, I had, the, I, I watched the same stuff you guys watched. But you know what else I watched? I watched NXT when Triple H was in charge. And Can't don't go. even tell me, don't even tell me he did a bad job with Kyrie. Don't even Kushida. tell me that he did a bad job with any of those guys. I mean, it, it became a disaster. Kenta, oh wait, time out. Let's see how they started with Kenta. Remember that whole deal with the Ascension? Look. Well, Kenta had work. an issue in that he, he hurt people he had, early. He beat the crap out of him, and nobody really wanted to do anything with the guy. That was an so, issue. So did Saray. I mean, that's what you get when you get these guys. You expect them to come over and just be something that they're not. So then they go and they thump somebody who's got very little experience in the, you know, the NXT Performance Center. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, again, obviously you don't want to hurt anybody. And I don't think he ever had the intention to. But I mean, again, like w w they sign people and it's like, what did you expect them to, to, to be? What did you expect them to do? You know what I mean? It just didn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to me. Never did, never will. And Kushida didn't. They didn't have things on all the right cylinders with him there. And I look, it's, I'm not saying it was terrible, but it wasn't. It certainly wasn't to the level it could have been. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Got a lot of stubborn people in the chat. That's fine. Oh, That's boy. fine. That's fine. It's been known from day one it was not going to be a total 180 in the first two weeks. It's going to be a while, but there are already positive changes, and there will be more. And you know what one of the biggest positive changes is? We haven't had one, we haven't had one match advertised that didn't take place since it started. Because nobody's coming in to tear everything up. They advertise stuff, and they deliver it. And I don't know about the rest of you, but did you guys watch SmackDown? There are yeah. guys doing stuff that I haven't seen them do since they were on the indies. It looks to me like there's there's more uh, freedom being given to guys in matches as opposed to back in the day where you did a move that Vince didn't like or get and he didn't want to see that move. And uh, I saw some stuff on that SmackDown show. I mean, there were good matches on SmackDown. And we'll see what happens tonight. But you're welcome to have PTSD. But uh, guy's gone, dude. He's gone. He's gone. I don't want to when hear do you, this. Oh, well, maybe he's still... He's not. He's gone. When do you think Donovan Dijak comes back? Oh, he's all salivating. <laughs> he can't wait. I, uh... He makes sense. You know, Karrion Cross is interesting because... You know, it's been said with him... It was said in NXT, Big Fish, Small Pond. You know, the, how much of a pose he struck in wherever it was, Lucha Underground or... Blood sport or wherever else he would appear, you know, he really was a little bit larger than life. But in NXT, he didn't really have that aura, and they tried with him. He looked the part, he had the entrance and all that stuff. But once you got by that, it was like, well, the work, they got so used to the work the fans did. They've been so conditioned to that, they didn't really like him. Then he goes up to the main roster and they give him that hideous outfit and the whole deal and take Scarlet away and take everything away that makes him special. Now we'll see how special he really is because he's got his shot. Drew McIntyre is a a really great bar to see if you can pass because if you can't get it with him, you ain't going to get it with Roman. And maybe you still get a match with Roman and you lose, but no, we don't have time for that. There are other people out there that are looking to grab that ring, that that brass ring. But, you know, the DiJacks of the world who have, you know, disappeared for a while and could come back with some force or somebody up from NXT or something like that. You know, I don't know how much rope cross is going to have, but it's really it's show and prove now or never. John Laurinaitis appears to be gone, according to PW Insider. The report said the dismissal was, quote, for obvious reasons. Get out of here. And kept quiet outside a very small circle of people in the know. Which is funny. Why wouldn't you make that public? Like, why Why is? Why would this have to be a secret that almost nobody knew about? Because well, they, they I, I be could see that. They should be making that very public. Well, see, I could see that just by 
quietly getting rid of him and that's it and waiting for the media to catch up to instead of issuing the press release, which shines a light back on it again. I mean, they they certainly made a really big deal out of Vince getting future endeavored. Well, they didn't really have much of a choice when it came to Vince. And look, the J- John Laurinaitis is going to continue to be in stories, and I can see other stories in the future saying John Laurinaitis was quietly released by the company and people pointing right back to it saying he was quietly released. So I, I think I know what they're doing from a tactical standpoint, but I don't think ultimately it's really going to matter once we actually get more stories in real sports and all that stuff. Rick Flair talked about his last match. He said he was very happy with it <laughs> and also said he didn't remember most of it. <laughs> That's why he was so happy with it. Bro. Oh, my God. I mean, what do you expect the guy to say? Can you cue up, hey, Dom, can you cue up Charles Mingus's The Clown? It may go on for a little bit too long, but uh, getting the, no, get here's those the same thing. vibes. Here's the thing. We should all celebrate that he was happy with it. Sure. Because now he didn't have to do another one. Yeah, If he was well, sad with it, he would want to do it again. Oh, my foot. Oh, I should have eaten that day. Oh, I maybe shouldn't have drank so much whenever. So I think that uh, it's good that he liked it. Whenever. He had those Michelob Ultras in his hand that he was, you know, being pictured with all weekend long. So, again, thinning out your blood even more for all the problems he had is uh, something else. And to see him down in Puerto Rico with Carlos Colon was uh, certainly something else, too. Carmel and Tatum Paxley suffered injuries on WWE house shows. Apparently, uh, uh, Corey Graves did a very angry tweet. He was very upset that he heard about his wife being injured on Twitter before. And listen. Uh, hey, get listen. off Twitter and call your well, wife, here's you a deal. dork. Here, here's a deal. <laughs> and I like I, Corey Graves. I would be very upset sakes. if my, my wife got injured. But this is not like when you get fired and you read about it on Twitter before anybody calls you. If For there's real. a fan in the front row with their phone open... And all of a sudden, you know, Carmella goes down and they get her out of there and they take her to the back. Like, of course, the fan's going to tweet about it. Of course, it'll be on Twitter before anybody alerts Corey. So I don't know what he was so mad about. I mean, I don't it's know. not like WWE announced she was injured and nobody told him about it. When you have fans with phones at ringside, it will be on Twitter before any anywhere else. So uh, Or on IG. Isn't that the whole point of Twitter and Instagram? But especially Twitter is to be able to break news quickly, and obviously that's a problem in and of itself. But it's to be able to have that first moment and reaction. And I understand him being a little stung that to find that out on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, that would be jarring. I would want to find out first from, from a phone call. But for him to lash out, it's like, that's like, Triple H to me, and I could be wrong because emotion could be playing a part in it, but it's like the people that get upset over like Triple H casting out his line and going, yeah, you know, Vince took it out of the smoke filled rooms, you know, just to get a reaction because he knows that's not true. He knows that's complete silliness and nonsense. The Boston Garden where he was close to certainly was not a smoke filled dingy hall unless you were from Los Angeles playing there. But you know, to me, that's kind of the same thing. What are you lashing out about? What are you doing besides trying to draw attention to yourself for some reason over something so trivial and stupid? This person says, if Bianca and Carmella bumped heads, why did Carmella only get concussed? Well, first off, that's not what happened. But if it was what happened, everybody is is different. I mean, look at Shibata. When Shibata did that uh, that headbutt that nearly ended, literally nearly ended his life, Okada wasn't concussed. It was just, that's what happened on that day. But what happened What happened was, uh, Bianca was on the middle rope, and she was going to do the backflip over. And as she was doing the backflip, Carmella just like ran headfirst into her ass and went down. And, uh, and then, actually, I got to give credit to Bianca, because she does the flip, and they're immediately supposed to do a spot with Carmella. But Carmella just drops and rolls out of the ring, and Bianca stopped, looked at her, Boom! Went right back to doing the spot with, I think it was Asuka on the top rope. Like, didn't even miss a beat. So, uh, that's good, because sometimes, you know, she hasn't been doing this that long. And sometimes when something goes wrong in a planned spot, like, the entire match falls apart. But Bianca was just, boom, right back doing whatever she was supposed to do. And then, apparently, with uh, Tatum Paxley, and I don't even know how this happens. She got, uh, she got booted in the head... And then her face hit the ring post. 
Yeah, well. Bro, what was the planned idea here? So sometimes I hear these spots and I'm like, what were you trying? Maybe she was really inspired by Dr. Death Steve Williams, who got 108 stitches in his eye, slamming it into the ring post. <laughs> Look, just being wrong place, wrong positioning. I mean, I'll let Lance and you talk about that, but taking a boot to the outside trip, lose your bounce a little bit. Well, that I can understand. I'm, I'm wondering if it was a spot where the person's head is against the post and the other person kicks the head and you're supposed to do a work kick so their head doesn't actually hit the post. That's I don't possible, know what happened. If that that's the thing. Hold on, though. If that would be the case, and that's always certainly possible, doesn't that then fall on the agent to go with well, of course. Paxley and whoever it is she's wrestling shouldn't be doing that? Yeah, but you know what? None of these agents have told Lash Legend to stop doing that basketball spot between the top and the middle rope. Because that's one of the worst spots I've ever seen. And nobody has told her to quit doing it. It looks horrible. Sometimes I feel that's my job, even though no one listens to me. I have to be the guy that tells the Lash Legend of this world, that doesn't look great. It doesn't look good. Stop! Because a lot of these uh, NIL blokes and blowcats, you know, they came from outside of wrestling. They came from the real world of sports. And so you know what happens when they go in there and they have bad matches? What's that? They go to the back and the agents kiss their ass. That's the last thing they need. They need a, uh, a more politically correct Rip Rogers back there to tell people what they need to hear, which is that basketball spot, Stop. Don't do it. It looks horrible. How would Rip Rogers say that, Brian? I can't talk like that on the air. Are you kidding me? <laughs> do it. Do. How would Tiffany Stratton cut these people down to size? Do it in her voice. And no, listen, it's not bullying Lash Legend. Huh. It's, it's, isn't that the it's point of an, a, isn't that the point of learning how to wrestle and having an agent and whatever to tell you that looks good, that doesn't look good? Who was uh, Otherwise, the, uh, why do you even have an agent or why do you even teach them? Just let them go do whatever they want. Was it Grayson Waller? Who was doing the high angle power bomb that they stopped doing and think, no, it was Duke Hudson, right? Was he, he's not still doing that high angle power bomb where it looks like he's killing somebody because he's slamming them down top speed. I haven't seen that in a while, but I, I put, a, I put a stop to that move examples. too. But that's like Lash. It's like, well, you're you're picking on Lash. It's like, no, there's another example of that. I'm not that. picking I'm just, on her. I'm picking on whoever isn't telling uh, her to stop exactly. doing that. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. We had a lot of shows this weekend. There were. Shall I discuss them after the break? A few of them, sure. We had Rampage, Battle of the Belts, and SmackDown, which uh, a lot happened on them shows. We'll talk about it after the break. Observer Live. Um, All right, let's get through this thing here pretty quick. So oh. first first we had Rampage, which had John Moxley beating Mance Warner, old Mancer, live on national television. And man, they gave him a lot. Moxley gave that dude a lot, but then he beat the stuffing out of him and gave him the standing choke, and he was dead. And so it's Moxley Chris Jericho at Quake of the Lake coming up on Wednesday. We had a quick Takeshita squash over Ryan Nemeth, which was to set up the match at Battle of the Belts, but was actually taped after Battle of the Belts. That was interesting. Madison Rain beat Layla Gray. This match was way too long. And, uh, I don't know. I was not uh, impressed at all with this match. And then afterwards, they set up Madison Rain live against Jade Cargill on Wednesday for the, uh, the TNT title. So, hopefully that is... Hopefully it's good. Then we had Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland versus Tony Nese and Josh Woods in a Friday night street fight. Does anybody know if the titles were on the line in this match? My God. I've heard, it's like 50-50 people that, it's like, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, ha! It doesn't matter anyway, because the champions won. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland defeated them. At a street fight that had tables and chairs and all sorts of the usual street fight stuff, but was still less violent than John Moxley's match with Old Manser, which was a straight wrestling match. But anyway, it was good, and uh, they got to do all their stuff, and... Finally, Nice uh, got stomped by old Strickland for the pin. Once again, the show was good. I do not expect it to do a good number. You had a Moxley match, but it was against a guy nobody had ever seen before. The women's match was too long. The uh, main event was good, but, you know, 
I don't think anybody thought that uh, title match or not, Josh Woods and Tony Nese had any chance of winning. So I liked it, but it's still the same issue we've been having with Rampage. And then, of course, we had Battle of the Belts, which was awesome. Wardlow beat Jay Lethal. Very good match. Jay Lethal had a great match with this guy. And uh, Wardlow beat him with the powerbomb. And then they did the angle afterwards where Dutt and Sutton Singh helped triple-team Wardlow. And Sutton stepped on his chest. And Wardlow tried the, uh, you know, the close-grip bench-press escape. And he almost got it. But then he was pummeled again. And it looks like they're setting up Wardlow versus Sotnam Singh in a singles match for the TNT title. Which, uh, I mean, I could talk about it later. But I, I wouldn't do that one right now. And if I did, believe it or not, I would book a rare DQ. But we can get into that later. Thunder Rosa beat Jamie Hayter. I thought this was a good match. Very good match. And uh, Jamie Hayter did a great job. And she is the toughest. She is so tough. You know who else is tough, by the way, is Britt Baker. You know how many times Britt Baker has been injured in matches and she just barrels on through? And then she had that broken wrist that she she wrestled on for like eight months and it never healed. She just kept going out there and defending the title with that big old thing on her wrist. Well, Jamie Hayter here, she gets a, a brain buster. Or she, actually, she gave the brain buster. She gives Thunder Rose a brain buster. Thunder Rose's knee just drives her nose. It goes right into her nose, and her nose didn't even bleed. Her nose just went over here. It's displaced the entire match. Then Thunder Rose does a flip dive off the apron, lands on her head. So that's two. And Jamie Hayter, just, she just bowled on through this match. And uh, Thunder Rose got the win. It is a good match. Very good match. And then the uh, main event was absolutely fantastic. Claudio and Takeshita. I mean, Dave actually said on the show, like, if you want to give it five stars, go for it. Was that good? And it was. This Takeshita. They need to do something. I don't know what title he's got to win. They got like 300 of them. But uh, he's got to win one of them here soon. And Claudio's awesome. And he's just getting to be Claudio after eight years of being, uh, uh, what was the name, Cesaro? Yes. He's much better as Claudio. I don't know if you've noticed or not. But anyway, he ran wild, and they did this, this, just every every big spot they've got. Ricola bomb finish. This match was awesome. And then uh, finally, Ricochet, Happy Corbin. They got 12 minutes. Ricochet won with the Shooting Star Press after there was some distraction. Corbin got distracted by McAfee, so I guess we're going to continue that feud. But Ricochet got the win with his move, and again... He did stuff he does not normally do as uh, the main roster ricochet. So that was cool. We had uh, Nakamura beating Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig Kaiser also doing stuff we've never seen him do on the main roster. Nakamura beat him clean. So he's going to get a match with Gunter next week for the U.S. title. We'll talk about the Liv Morgan segment at the end. But then we had a gauntlet match. And, uh, you know, they're, they're all into this women's division. But this gauntlet match was not good. Sonya Deville beats Elia, two minutes. Raquel beats Sonya, two minutes. Raquel beats Shotzi, one minute. Raquel beats Zia Lee, two minutes. Raquel beats Natty, two minutes. And then Shayna comes out, Raquel's tired. Shayna beats her clean with a roll-up in three minutes. So it'll be Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan for the title at the Clash at the Castle. The Viking Raiders, who I don't think they ever refer to as the new vicious Viking Raiders, thank God. They're now just the Viking Raiders. They destroyed Tommy Gibson and Jim Mulkey. Jim Mulkey. Oh, I loved it. It was great. <laughs> then Kofi came out and beat him up with a kendo stick, so they did Kofi versus Eric. Kofi beat him clean. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of crowd swinging on this show, but this crowd was super into Kofi Kingston. You could see him standing and jumping up and down, so they liked this guy. And then the main event was Roman Reigns' Drew McIntyre segment where we saw the return... Of Karrion Cross, who attacked Drew McIntyre and uh, beat him up. Reigns just watched. Scarlet was there with her uh, her hourglass and the clock thing, and they had a they had a big clock brawl thing. there at the end of the show. Isn't that the hourglass? Oh, Mike! What she bring out a sundial? But anyway, what did I there. What, anyway, what did I miss? anyway. I thought the show, uh, there, there, there were obviously two problems on the show. A lot of people didn't like the return of Karrion Cross, But uh, if you didn't like Karrion Cross in NXT, fine, okay? 
If you're judging this on the main roster of Karrion Cross when Vince brought him up and had him lose to Jeff Hardy and then just like he was just nothing, uh, don't don't judge it on that. I'll give the guy I'll give the guy some time here as a Triple H version of Karrion Cross. But I will admit that I was stunned that he was uh, brought back and added to this particular uh, feud here. But obviously, the other thing we got to talk about is uh, is Liv Morgan, and we do. Yes, Liv Morgan. Oh. Just she was so over. She was so over. This is a kind of a weird story. Everybody wanted her to win that title, and she ends up winning Money in the Bank, and the place was just they were so happy. And then she went on and she won the women's title, and people were over the moon. Okay, now Ronda Rousey and uh, Becky Lynch is. I mean, 99%, that's the main event, the women's main event of probably one of the two nights of WrestleMania. So eventually, Ronda Rousey's got to get that belt back. And I think that probably the plan was that Ronda was going to beat her and win the title back at SummerSlam. But Liv was so over that me and you and I think everybody else advocated, you know, she should hold this for a while before she loses it. But they booked this match with Ronda Rousey. And so... uh you know, I don't know whose idea the finish was. If you want to just automatically blame it on Triple H, you can. But, you know, Vince was around until the week before SummerSlam. And I'm sure that they talked to Ronda Rousey prior to Vince leaving. And they probably had to come up with a finish that Ronda was cool with. And this is what they came up with. So I'm not saying 100% this finish was Vince's idea. But I think there's a decent chance that this was an idea under Vince to protect Ronda Rousey and give Liv Morgan another win, which they thought, oh, man, everybody's going to be so happy. She's still champion. Well, the way they did it, she comes out on the show and she's immediately booed. And then she's all flustered. And she's so flustered that she drops an S-bomb on national television. And then she actually says... Yeah, I tapped, but I tapped after I thought it had been a three count. And everyone's like, oh, they totally turned on her. And so she's just being booed out of the building. And then they sent out uh, Sonya to try and get heat, which she did. But And then Liv's got to sit there at ringside for this whole match. And it's like, what? This finish, this finish was a disaster. Like whoever came up with it, it was a disaster. And they've totally turned Liv Morgan. They turned the fans on Liv Morgan. They hate her now. And, you know, maybe it was one night in one building. Maybe she'll come out, you know, next week and be cheered or whatever. But, man, that finish did her no favors. And she was super over until they did that. So that's the show. Any thoughts on any of them? Well, they spent all that time undercutting what the fans wanted and what the fans saw in her because they had to tell their story about the plucky loser underdog. How many times did she lose to Bianca? How many times did she lose to Becky? How many times did she lose to Carmella? Yeah, I lost, but I'm going to fight back and win because it works sometimes. They do it all the time. Sometimes people like winners, like... Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar and Bianca Belair and dominant champions who go out there and win, who don't cry, who don't have a bunch of excuses. And they kept going with that to the point where it still seemed like she'd be able to get over the hump. And look, that was just one crowd on Friday night. You never know what could happen. Ronda's out of the picture. Shayna's coming in. It's going to be extra healed up. So maybe this is much ado about nothing. But if it is the start of something, it's certainly something that was done by their own hand. The PTSD is strong. Oh, boy. What's going on over there? God, everyone's just like, oh, you keep telling me it's better, but that Liv Morgan segment. It's like, yeah, one segment on a two-hour show. That does one bad segment on a two-hour show do those does not mean want? that it is as bad as it was with Vince. It is objectively much better now. But Baby no, it's steps. not perfect. And you know what? I really liked Rampage, but that women's match was not good. That doesn't mean Rampage is a bad show. Like, you're gonna find bad things on Dynamite. You're gonna find bad things in New Japan. Bro, I watched Fall A and Tom. 
It was bad. <laughs> Although, you know what? It's better than I expected. That doesn't mean that this G1 is terrible. It means there was something bad in the G1. You're going to see bad things on every wrestling show. There's no show that's perfect. The show is much better now. NXT is much better. But yes, hey. when I review it, there's stuff on the show that's still bad. That doesn't mean the whole show is as bad as it was in October. I get that it sucked under Vince. I get that. Dude, I my life has been shortened having to review those Raws. I'll probably die 10 years earlier than I was supposed to. But I'm telling you, it's better now. There's still problems. And there's still going to be a shaky camera. But dude... It's better. Raw is better, and SmackDown is better, and NXT is better. And there's going to be a bad segment here and there. It doesn't mean the show is overall bad. That would be like me saying, you know, women's match on Rampage? Didn't like it. Rampage sucked. It didn't! It was a bad match on an overall good show. If there had been, if there had been a, a, let's say that uh, the Thunder Rosa match with uh, Jamie Hayter had sucked, okay? I'm not going to come on here and tell you that Battle of the Belt sucked. It would still have been a great show, even though there was something bad on it. Now I'm getting PTSD from this. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, having a discussion in the chat. Yes, they screwed up Liv Morgan. Okay, she got booed on so far. So far, by the way, a show. I don't know if she's going to be booed on Friday. I don't know if they're going to turn her heel. I don't know what they're going to do. It was it literally it was one show, and they're like, "What other what other company screws up their shit?" Well, Sammy Guevara. Do you guys remember the build to that mixed tag with Sammy and Ty and uh, Dan Lambert's crew? That was a month or more. That went on forever. Where it's like, is this person a babyface heel? This person getting cheered. Lambert's getting cheered. Now Lambert's getting booed. Sammy's supposed to be a babyface. He's getting dude. And you know what, Brian? They turned on that, Ruby Soho. E there you go. Even that's a one bad example. show, by the way. Even that's a bad, the the Cody thing that Sammy Cody kind of taking, Sammy taking the place of Cody though. Like, okay, I give you that one, but like, has Thunder Rose's booking and the scenario she's been put in since she won the title with Nyla Rose the next night? I love cake, all that nonsense. Has it been the best? I mean, you can look at a lot of stories, a lot of things, a lot of individuals that sometimes it doesn't work. And I'm not. Look, WWE is not absolved of all their sins of the past, but we can at least look at this objectively and take any positives, no matter if they're baby steps or not. And they're going to be as positives. Either side, that's all I can ask for to make a more coherent, better show, especially on Monday when I have to dedicate three hours to it. That's all I'm asking. I'm excited for tonight and tomorrow for NXT 2.0. And, of course, for Dynamite, it's Quake of the Lake, brother. You know what happens when you have a Quake of the Lake? A tsunami of action. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm out of here. I'm out of here for two more days of four hours a night. We'll talk, talk to you next time. That. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>